Hello students, today we are going to learn about the X-ray, its production, properties and uses. Nowadays everyone knows what are X-rays, what are their uses, but just think that the world is before 150 years back from today, there are no X-rays and if someone is asking you that uh, is it possible to see the bones present in your body without cutting your skin, so definitely the answer will be no because it will be surprise if I will be able to see my bones without cutting my skin okay but nowadays it is very common that is x-ray so let us understand x-ray in detail so we all know that x-rays were discovered by Wilhelm Röntgen in Germany in the year of 1895 actually the discovery of this x-rays was totally accidental so when this Röntgen was studying regarding electrical charge phenomena in his laboratory so he noticed that there is one screen that is coated with barium salt it started glowing whenever it was near to cathode ray tube okay so you can see the cathode ray tube in this figure so to further check he covered this screen with the black paper so even after that the screen was glowing so it showed that this rays they are passing from black pepper to reach to screen. For further checking he took photographic plate okay and that plate was covered or wrapped by black pepper. So he found that the photographic plate started fogging. So it is nothing but one type of the chemical process. Then what he did so he decided to check further. So on one side there was cathode ray tube, on other side there was photographic plate and he put his hand between this uh, tube as well as photographic plate, clear? So he could see the bones of his hand, you can see in this picture, he could see this bones of his own hands. So what he decided, he decided that there are unknown rays, those were highly penetrating. So these rays were literally passing from your body tissues but this bones were not allowing them to pass so there was shadow of this bones over the photographic plate clear so he was not knowing the names of this uh, rays so he just put these are x rays okay for example in mathematics or in physics many times if we don't know the name of the persons okay so what we are telling x person or if you don't know any number in the mathematics so we are telling okay like x uh, figure okay or x number so in the same way this rays were unknown to him so he just used the uh, name that is x rays clear now how the x ray is working so it is very simple phenomena okay so on the screen you can see that sunlight is coming from the left side of the screen so you have one object of h height now that sunlight is producing shadow of that object on right side of the screen clear so in the same way whenever you put any object okay so that should be non-destructive clear so ndt means it is non-destructing testing element clear so whenever the x-rays are coming from the left side and the object is uh, between this plate and source of x-ray so definitely on the plate you will be able to see the shadow of this object clear so in the same way we are using this x-rays now how this x-rays they are produced so let us discuss regarding production so in this production there will be solid target mostly of copper or tungsten now this target will be bombarded with the electrons of which the kinetic energy uh, it is in kilo electron volt so kilo means we all know kilo means it is 10 raised to 3 now what is electron volt so electron volt it is the unit of energy equal to the work done on an electron in accelerating it through a potential difference of 1 volt. So let us make it very simple. If you apply potential difference of 1 volt to accelerate the energy of electron clear. So that particular energy will be known as 1 electron volt is this clear again if you apply 1 volt of potential difference to the electron to accelerate its energy so whatever the energy you are giving okay so that will be known as electron volt so here it is in few kilo electron volts clear so this electromagnetic radiation will be emitted and those will be known as x-rays now 
special kind of the design that you can see on this uh, right side of this slide okay so that was given by Coolidge in 1913 now uh, what are the uh, steps or sequences for this x-ray production so first step so current is passing from the filament and definitely because of this current passing filament gets heated now this heated filament will heat the cathode now this cathode definitely it is negatively charged so it starts emitting electron through the process of thermionic emission so thermionic emission means it is emission of the electrodes from heated source okay and definitely there will be bombarding of the electron from cathode to anode with 20 to 40 kilo volt now by this process x-rays will be emitted from anode clear so this is the process how this x-rays they are coming so it is very simple process i repeat there will be current passing from the filament that will hit the cathode that heated cathode will emit the electrons those electrons will be colliding with the anode okay and this anode will be giving you x-rays clear now we have to see the graph of intensity versus wavelength so the name itself it is telling intensity versus wavelength means intensity will be on vertical axis and wavelength will be on horizontal axis so the name of graph is always given from vertical axis versus horizontal axis so here the sample graph is given okay with the example of molybdenum molybdenum it is having atomic number of 42 clear so whenever it is bombarded with 35 kilo electron volt energy so this type of the graph is formed okay so let us understand the characteristics of this graph so first characteristic is graph is starting from lambda minimum so you can see the lambda minimum it is the minimum wavelength and it is continuous so we can see that it is the lowest point of the graph so that is minimum wavelength as well as it is uh, on the right side continuous okay so x-rays of different wavelengths have different intensity okay so they are having continuous relation so this line of the graph is not breaking anywhere second is relative intensity is very high corresponding to some definitive wavelength so if you consider any uh, specific point on this graph and consider as definitive wavelength so you can see that there are two spikes so if you consider any point on this graph so as compared to that graph point okay so that is nothing but definitive wavelength point so you have this k beta and k alpha they are having relatively higher intensity clear so whatever the point you consider on this graph okay and you consider that as definitive wavelength so definitely the relative intensity will be very high on this two spikes points clear so the relative intensity is very high corresponding to some definitive wavelength point on this graph okay characteristic three mostly the lambda minimum we will be considering as definitive wavelength in practically clear so here you can see that all the points they are having uh, above the lambda minimum wavelength clear now how this is produced okay so high kinetic energetic electrons they are coming with k0 energy okay this electrons they will collide with the atoms on anode okay definitely they will come from cathode and they will collide with anode okay so they will lose their energy and this energy will be producing x-ray photon now it is not over still this electrons definitely now they are having energy lesser than k0 they will collide with another atoms and again they will lose some energy and they will be producing another photon so with multiple collisions they continuously emit the x-rays of different frequency so ultimately if we collectively see so all these photons generated by this collisions generate continuous x-ray spectrum of continuous frequency or wavelength that already we have seen in form of graph of intensity versus wavelength so in short the electrons they are coming with any energy you consider it k0 okay they will collide with the anode okay so they will lose some energy so this lost energy will be converted or will be producing photon of this x-ray again this electron will be colliding with another atoms on the same anode okay so definitely their energy is less as compared to uh, its previous energy 
but still they will be colliding they will be losing their energy and by this way they are continuously losing their energy and they will be producing x-rays photon okay so here the x-rays are produced with different wavelength but ultimately they are continuous means we can say that x-rays are emitted of different wavelengths but they are continuous there is no break now what are the properties so this x-rays they are part of electromagnetic waves so on one side they have gamma rays on other side they have ultraviolet rays they have very short wavelength generally it is around one angstrom angstrom means it is the unit of length okay and one angstrom is equal to 10 raised to minus 10 meter clear and definitely this x-rays they are invisible rays we cannot see with our eyes now this x-rays they are not affected by any electric or magnetic field so whenever this x-rays they are passing so if they are passing from any electric or magnetic field they will not affect by any mean on x-rays now they have very high penetrating power so they can pass literally from our body but they will be stopped by our bones and dead cells okay so by using this property only we are going for x-ray of different body parts okay and we will be able to diagnose something now they are capable of ionizing few gases ionizing means the molecule will be converted into ion okay so that process is known as ionization okay and they will be also able to change electrical properties of some liquids and gases now as light travels in the straight line this x-rays they are also traveling in the straight line only with velocity of 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second so it is like light only now they affect the photographic plate and by this uh, property only we are able to get the x-rays in medical field okay x-rays of different bones okay and uh, x-rays of different dead cells yes all these are possible because they are having chemical process with photographic plate now they stimulate fluorescence and phosphorescence in some material so what is fluorescence so fluorescence it is the emission of light by a substance that has absorbed light or other electromagnetic radiation okay again i repeat fluorescence is the emission of light by a substance that has absorbed light or other electromagnetic radiation so in this diagram also you can see that a particular material is getting light okay then by this absorbed light only it will also start emitting rays now whatever the rays they are absorbed and whatever the rays they are emitted there will be difference between these two what is the difference so uh, whatever the emitted rays are there okay they have longer wavelength and lower energy okay so emitted rays will be having longer wavelength and lower amount of energy as compared to absorbed rays best example radium we are seeing the radium on the highways so they will absorb the light of particular vehicle and then they will reflect that light okay so they will emit that light so that is nothing but best example of fluorescence now phosphorescence so what it is so it is light emitted by substance without combustion or perceptible heat so we know that all the heated objects they are uh, emitting light but here without any type of the combustion or without any type of burning okay or without any type of the heat formation also they will be emitting the light okay so this property is known as phosphorescence now this x-rays they are diffracted by crystals so that is very simple to understand if the x-rays they are passing so they are passing in the straight line but if they are passing from the crystal so based on the uh, crystal formation or lattice organization of this crystal they will be diffracted diffracted means they will be spreading okay so it depends on molecular design of this crystal now what are the uses so we all know the use of x-rays in medicine so it will be able to identify the fracture of bone so you can see that there is fracture in this upper limb bones okay so that is will be uh, that is to identify the fracture of bone okay definitely it will be able to identify the dislocation of joint so here you can see the shoulder is dislocated so that is 
very well identified by X-ray. X-rays will be also able to identify the presence of foreign body. So you can see that one coin is swallowed by this child. So by X-ray, uh, individual can identify that what is the current location of this coin. And in tuberculosis, so that is nothing but infection of lung. So that will be also identified by this uh, X-ray. So we discussed that X-rays will be giving you picture of bone as well as dead cells. So here you can see the lungs they are affected by uh, this tuberculosis clear. So whatever the dead cells are available in the lung that can be identified very easily. So in this x-ray you can see on the right side you have normal x-ray on the left side that is figure A. Figure A is of tuberculosis patient. So you can identify this dead cells. Now in terms of industry and engineering this x-rays they are also widely used. So what is the use? So they will be used to detect the flow in machinery parts, metal casting, metal structure, etc. Okay, so the particular structure or particular casting of this metal will be confirmed by X-ray. So they will be able to identify any fault in the design. Now in security reasons also uh, to detect the hidden roots in your wooden or leather bag. So this machines it is uh, very common to have this machines on the airports clear. So even when your bag is not open the security person can identify if any suspected object is inside this bag clear. So that will be useful to detect hidden goods in wooden or leather bags. In case of radiotherapy to treat the tumor inside the body. So our body cells they are less affected by x-rays okay if the x-rays radiation is limited clear so whenever they are in limited source okay on limited amount so definitely they will not kill normal cells but they will kill cancer cells so this is very good property of x-ray so it will not kill normal cell but it will kill cancer cells but here again we have to be clear that this quantity of x-ray should be under control. Excessive radiation will definitely uh, cause damage to even normal cells but if it is in controlled manner so definitely it will kill cancer cells okay. So here to treat the tumors inside the body this radiation therapy will be useful. Now in case of research also the x-rays they are having wider use. So by this x-rays the scientist will be able to uh, study the arrangement of position of different atoms and molecules in crystals. Now uh, this uh, total lecture is prepared from this book okay. Uh, the book is of biomedical physics by author Jignasha Patel. So I am thankful to this author. If you have any question you can ask. Thank you.